All right, so we're, we're recording. So welcome, hello museum families, and welcome to our second Royal BC Museum Kids, a play date of sorts uh, through screens across British, British Columbia and the world. And this is, oh no, actually, <laughs> this is our official uh, Royal BC Museum uh, logo <laughs> made by my kid. And today, our session is about arthropods. Also, my kid Asa and Asa, uh, too. I told Asa that Joel is a, is a big fan of uh, beach flies, so Asa made a beach fly. So, um, my name is Chris O'Connor, and I'm a learning program developer at the Royal BC Museum. We, you, me, us, are spending lots of time these, time these days uh, in our houses and apartments. So the idea of this program is to bring the Royal Beast Museum to you. And since we can't bring the woolly mammoth to your front door, though that would be really fun, uh, we're instead making things together. Last week, we had our first Royal BC Museum sesh kids session with Dr. Victoria Arbor, curator of paleontology. We drew dinosaurs, but specifically Buster, a Ferrosaurus sustenensis, a brand new species of dinosaur found by the Sustat River, which is kind of like mid northern BC. Um, this uh, dinosaur is also called the Iron Lizard, which is a super cool name. Uh, so I asked people if they could send in their their photographs. I mean, their their drawings that they made uh, last uh, last week, and you came through so well. Um, there's so many um, so many people that uh, submitted their artwork. So I'm going to just show you very quickly some of that artwork now. So this these are the many busters that I got uh, last week. So um, I think visitors as young as one. And then we had some visitors, uh, some of the participants last week that were as old as I, maybe 60, I don't want to guess. Um, but uh, parents and grandparents and, and kids made these uh, beautiful buster, like so many lovely colors, um, so many different interpretations. One has a sun with sunglasses, one is speaking something out. Um, so really lovely artwork. Um, so at the end of today, um, at the end of today, we will, I'll invite you to share the artwork that you made uh, today. So um, just gonna come back to the introduction. So, um, in this format, you can see me, your host, I'm Chris, and our special guest each week. And today that's Joel. Hello, Joel. Hello. Though we can't see you, we can hear you if you use the chat window uh, or the comment section if you're watching on Facebook Live. And heads up, we'll be drawing, drawing again today, so make sure that you have some paper and something to draw with. Anything works, a marker, colored pencils, um, crayons, anything, even just a pencil uh, works. Uh, and we'll be recording that we are recording this session. So if you need to take a break or you need more time, you can just play it again later when we post it on the museum uh, YouTube page. The most important things these days, the most important thing these days is that you be kind to yourself and to others. So that's, that's really the most important thing. So take a breath and, um, and enjoy the session and you can always come back to it. Uh, I'll look at the chat window as we go along. Um, so if you have any questions, feel free to ask and I'll try to uh, bring them across to Joel too. Our special guest today is Dr. Joel Gibson. He is the Royal BC Museum Curator of Entomology, which means that he's the bug guy at the museum. Insects and spiders, Joel can't get enough of them. We have thousands and thousands of insects and spiders at the Royal BC Museum, not alive. They're, they're um, they're dead, which makes it easier to look at. Um, and, and Joel looks at these and likes to ask big questions from what he sees related to the natural world that we live in. So um, without further ado, hello, Joel. How are you doing? And did I capture what you do at the museum 
Well, yeah, that's a that's a great summary of what I do. Um, I, I like being considered the bug guy at the museum. I've been working on bugs for over 20 years and, and I certainly haven't gotten enough of looking at them. So I'm glad that we all get to look at them today or today too. Great. Well, we look forward to what you have uh, in store. So feel free to take it away. All right. Um, thanks folks. I'm really glad all you folks could join us today and we're inside and we're drawing. And last week we drew something really big, although I did watch Victoria's, um, Victoria's presentation and it wasn't the biggest dinosaur, but it's certainly a lot bigger than anything we're gonna talk about today. Because today we're talking about insects and spiders and centipedes, which none of them are nearly as big as a dinosaur. In fact, most of them are gonna be smaller than your hand, no matter how small your hand is. So that's the stuff we're talking about today. It's little things. We're gonna try drawing them um, and just kind of talk about all the parts that are in it. So there's a chance for you to draw a couple of things. If you want to try drawing one thing and just work on it as best you can, go ahead. But if you want to try a couple, then get a couple pieces of paper, a couple things to draw with. Anything will work. I'm going to use markers just because it shows up well on here. Um, but you can use pencil crayons, crayons, pens, pencils, anything. So grab something to draw with and then let's just talk about it. And I call this build a critter because what I want to talk about today is like what things go into it to make it an insect or a spider or a centipede. And if you wanted to try to draw one, what things should you put in it? But this is also kind of neat because if you're out in your garden or if you get a chance to take a walk or there's something that you even see on your window, you can kind of look and see what parts are there and take a guess as to what it is. So that's the other part about it. So first thing I want to talk about is probably the only thing you can see of me, which is heads. So when it comes to insects or spiders or centipedes, they've all got heads. And you know it's a head because what's on the head? Well, there's eyes, these, and there's mouth parts. And human mouth parts aren't very complicated. It's just kind of a mouth. There's lips, there's teeth inside, but you don't really see them if your mouth's closed. Maybe there's a beard, but not everyone has this. But Here's different things. So if you want to try to start drawing just a head, go ahead, start trying to draw a head. And if you want to put eyes, this is the nice little secret with drawing critters is it's not really a wrong way to do it. And if you can think of a shape, there's probably an insect, a spider or a centipede that has that shape. So you can have really, really big eyes. These are the ones you kind of think of in cartoons or you see a big house fly and they've got a really big one. So you can try drawing a head that's got a really gigantic eye. Or someone else I saw in the comments pointing out you could have something like this. This is eight eyes. Now, these are all from the side. So you might think, wait a minute, shouldn't there be two of them? But just think of this as looking sideways. So you can only see one at a time. That's the easiest way for me to show it to you. So we're gonna try to draw everything from the side. So here's one big eye. Here's four like on a spider and there'd be four on the other side. Some insects and centipedes have really, really tiny eyes. Actually, even some of them have no eye at all. So if you wanna draw yours with no eyes on the head, that's okay. Sometimes there's a shaped eye. You'll get to see this with bees, which yes, they are a type of insect, Wayne, that might have a shaped eye like this that wraps around something. And also one thing I'll point out now, these are all just with black, but there's no wrong color. If you pick any color to draw your insect or your centipede or your spider head, somewhere in the world there's one that is purple or red or blue or orange. So there's no wrong color to draw with and there's no really wrong shape of the eye. So if you want to think about that, if you want to try sketch it out a few heads with eyes, go ahead or just think about it when you want to build your big critter, what type of eye you'd want to go with. Now also on the head, you've got mouth parts. Now this is also exciting because insects and spiders and centipedes there's no shortage of shapes to the mouth parts. Sometimes they're kind of dangly like this with a few little segments that sort of hang down, sort of like an extra finger. Um, sometimes they're big jaws like this and you'll often find that when there's toys or cartoons of something, they like to show insects with big pinching mouth parts with big spikes on them. And yes, there's lots of insects that have that. Sometimes there's fangs like this. I saw a comment earlier saying, are centipedes poisonous? Well, they are venomous and they can have venom in there. Almost none of them are enough to actually hurt people if they were to bite you. So if somebody got bitten by a centipede, it would hurt, but it's not gonna really be deadly. 
but you can have fangs. Spiders also have fangs like this. We're going to talk about that. And then sometimes you get crazy mouth parts like this, like a caterpillar turns into a butterfly and then a butterfly has really long coiled up mouth parts like this. So there's lots of different shapes you can go with with mouth parts. Now the other thing you might think about when you're trying to build your critter or trying to design something would be antennae. Now this is definitely something we don't have. Nothing up here. Animals don't have it. The closest things you can think about might be like antlers on a deer. And antlers are kind of like antennae, but actually not that close at all. Because if you think about a deer, there's lots of them that walk around here in this neighborhood in Saanich, but deer antlers sort of stick out of the head and they're solid in one piece. And you never really see a deer picking up something with its antenna. You never see them moving them around. They're just kind of big horns. And it's the same thing if you have a cow horn, same thing if you have a sheep or goat horns. They're big and they're impressive and they stick out of the head, but they're not really the same thing. Because when you have an insect, they have antenna that are a lot longer, often with a lot of different segments. Sometimes they can even have like giant sections that stick out and have huge antenna. Sometimes they're feathery like this. And sometimes they're kind of simple like this. Now there's a few insects you'll see that can actually move things around with their antenna, but usually with their antenna, they're smelling things. So they can usually smell and taste things with their antenna. You'll definitely notice this with something like an ant. If you see an ant walking around, they'll kind of stop and touch everything with their antenna. That's because they're smelling and tasting it. So antenna come in a lot of shapes, feathery, long, like a string of beads, something jointed. Sometimes they're super tiny and you can just barely see them. So that's a fun thing to put on when you want to design your insect is pick some kind of antenna on there. And then you can think of, well, it's big in shape like this because it's probably in order to smell fruit which yes, there's insects that do that. Now, in order to get to the fruit or the food, you need legs. And insects, spiders, and centipedes all have legs, and they all have a lot of different shapes of legs. And we'll talk a little bit about how many legs you should put on your critter. But when it comes to what shapes the legs are, there's no shortage of different designs. You can have little spiky ones that are very sharp. It can actually pinch you sometimes when you pick them up. You can have long, hairy ones, and you can have long ones like this. This one I kind of drew in here to be like, well, this one's kind of like a grasshopper leg where they're really big and specialized for something. So any shape of leg kind of works. You'll see a theme here. Any shape that you go with probably works for an insect or a spider and somewhere has it. The cool thing for you to think about is, well, why is it that shape for the critter that you're designing? So, and don't worry, we are going to talk about bodies and what these all go on. But if you just want to practice sketching these things out, go ahead. And there's one other thing we want to talk about, which is kind of neat and definitely not something that we have, at least not any people that I know, which is wings. And insect wings are really cool. And they can also have a lot of different shapes. And this is definitely a place where you get to play with a lot of different color that you want to talk about or different shapes. Now, some of them, if you want to try to draw really fancy, complicated ones, would be something like this dragonfly wing, which is usually really big and has lots of little veins on it. It can even look like a checkerboard. Whenever I see them, I feel like I want to do a crossword puzzle on them. And there's that. There's kind of simple fly or bee wings like this, which just have a few veins. Sometimes they have patterns on them. Um, you also get big butterfly wings. Now I purposely left this one without a lot of colors and you think, no, there's no butterfly that's that boring. There's a few. There's a few that are just white and have no patterns, but most of the time you'd think of a monarch butterfly that would have um, orange and black on it. There's tiger striped ones. There's ones that are all shiny blue. So these are butterfly wings, but it's wide open to whatever you want to draw there. And there's also some wings that are kind of like this. This looks like our feathery leg. So there's even some wings that are really kind of skinny and aren't really that much help. Yes, butterfly and moth wings kind of look the same shape, Wayne. Thanks for asking. And then there's a few types you get wings like this that are just kind of a big shield and are hard and have lots of colors on them. So once again, any type of wing shape you want to go with will work. So now we've looked at some different parts and now let's try drawing something and seeing what kind of parts we might want to put on it. If you've already started to draw something, go ahead. That's great. 
So let's try a spider. Let me just get my piece of paper here. And Joel, I'm sorry, I'm just going to jump in for a second. So there's a question of, can you give us an example of a bug that has feather wings? Ooh, I'll try to draw on that. Feather wings, there's a couple of flies that have really feathery wings, and they can't actually even really fly. Um, that's the other thing. You find some insects that'll have two wings, some that'll only have, some that'll have four wings, and some have little feathery stumpy wings that don't really fly at all. And to tell you the truth, scientists sometimes don't even know why they're feathery like that. If you can't use them to fly, I don't know, maybe they use them to sense things, maybe they can smell things with their wings, I don't know. But you, you do find them once in a while, these little tiny insects that I'll even find them in my yard and you look under the microscope and they have these little tiny feathery wings and the whole thing will be much tinier than even your fingernail. So I've seen them, but I don't know what the feathery wings are for. Good question though. So a spider. So here, let's get some color going here too. Let's try, well, brown, there's a starting color. So when you want to design a spider, or you want to try drawing one, or if you see something out in your yard that you think might be a spider, there's two things to think about. There's two body segments, there's eight legs, there's no antennae, this is kind of a bummer. If you wanted to try to draw some big fancy feathery antenna, not on a spider. Spiders don't have antenna, and they don't have wings. So this is also not the time to try out your wing stuff, but you can try out some cool colors, you can try out some cool leg shapes, and you can try out some cool mouth parts, especially fangs. So let's give that a try. Two body sections. So there's one big abdomen part here. And then we can draw a big head here. So two sections. And you think, wait a minute, how can there only be two sections? Well, there is only two sections with a spider which is kind of strange, because you ever look really closely at a spider, what you'll realize is yes, on the head, there's eyes, and you know it's the head because there's eyes. So I'm gonna draw four eyes up on here, which we know there would probably be four of them, but let's say one big one and three smaller ones on that side. Okay, so that must be the head. That's where the eyes are. And we'll say, okay, this one also has fangs, because most spiders have fangs. And yes, they have venom. In order to catch their things they're going to eat, they're going to need fangs that have venom in them. So the mouth parts are going to be here. So there we go. We've got mouth parts here and a head. Well, that makes sense. You got eyes and mouth parts on a head. The weird thing about spiders is that their legs are also on their head which is very strange. And you don't think of it that way. You think of it that this is just a case of, it's a strange type of arthropod where the head and the next part of the body kind of got mushed into one segment. So what you end up with is all of the legs are coming out of the head. And there should be eight, remember? Remember we said eight legs? So four on each side. There we go. Now once I said, not the greatest artist, but that's okay. This is a chance for you to get creative. If you wanna have, you know, stripes on the head or patterns that go across the head, there's certainly things that have, you know, stripes or hairs, this might have pink hairs coming out of the side of the head body, go ahead, you can do that. Now, one thing someone may have asked, I might've missed it in the chat, is okay, this, I understand spiders, there's a head, there's fangs, there's eyes, there's legs, there's a body, well, what's in the body part? And what about the spider web? We know spiders make webs, where's that supposed to come from? That is back here. There's these little things that come out. So if you ever see in movies or in cartoons where spiders um, are spitting out their web from their mouth, no, that's not true. They come out of the back end. There's these little ropes that will come out here and they're actually really complicated. When you look under the microscope, there's these really careful little patterns that they can shoot out four at a time and then coil them together and twist them together and make these really big patterns. So spiders, Everything's on the head and then on the back, who knows what's there. 
and this is also great because you can put whatever patterns you want on here. If you want to put long hairs on it, if you want to make it a black widow spider, then you just put this little pattern on it, and then it looks like a black widow spider, and everyone's scared of it, even though they're not really that much scarier than other spiders because they're still pretty tiny. But there you go. That's what you need if you want to draw a spider. Ooh, there's a good question. How do the spiders not stick to their webs? Um, two things. One, sometimes they do, which is always kind of funny. If you're watching a spider and you see it stuck in its web, it's a little bit funny. But also the other thing is spiders sometimes know which webs in their, which strings in their web are sticky and which ones aren't. So it's sort of like if you're walking through your house and you know which bricks to stand on or which boards so that they don't creak, they know that too. So they'll know to step on certain webs and not others and get through and not stick. Whereas a fly flying by, they don't know and they just stick to the web. So there's a spider, there you go. That's all you need to do to be able to draw a spider or recognize a spider. Look for eight legs, look for a head, no antenna, no wings. Let's try something else. And once again, if you want to try any of these, if you don't want to try any of these, it's up to you. Draw as many as you want. Right, Joel, just before you go on to the next one, there's a question of why are the webs invisible? Well, they're kind of invisible. It's the sort of thing that spider webs I always find kind of neat. Because sometimes I've definitely walked into one and it gets stuck in my face and it's really gross. Um, even though I work on insects, I still find it gross when I get a mouthful of spider web. But um, they are kind of invisible, but a lot of things can stick to them too. So if you have a little bit of water on them or a little bit of dust, that's what you get cobwebs. So in your house, whenever anything gets stuck to the sticky web, then you can start to see it. But some spiders each have their own special type of web. Sometimes they're a really big sheet. Sometimes they're really tiny little circles. Um, a lot of spiders don't even spin webs. They'll just kind of crawl around and grab things. So they don't even really stop to bother to build a web because they just keep moving and hunting more like a tiger than like a spider. So centipede, I saw someone ask about that, about a centipede. And this one, this is your chance to go with as many segments as you want. Um, they say centipede means 100 feet. There's not really that many that actually look like 100, exactly 100 legs. I think it's just because people got tired of counting. So they said, oh, centipede, yeah, there's got to be 100. So let's just say it has 100 legs. But it can be, you know, somewhere between five segments, sometimes up to 20 or 30 if you really want to. Um, the key is they do have antenna, but they don't have wings. We're not getting to our wings yet. But they have many legs. And as long as you have one pair of legs on every segment, it's a centipede. So let's try different color here. Once again, we got to have a head. And we'll figure out what we want to put on the head in a minute. But there's the head. And let's do as many segments as we feel here. See how much space I get on this paper. Once again with you, if you've got bigger paper, go for it. And While you're going, Joel, the uh, question of how, how long can centipedes live? Ooh, most of these things we talk about, that's a really good question, is insects and spiders and centipedes don't usually live very long at all. Um, kind of the longest living things you'll get is sometimes you get queen ants and queen bees, which can live for a couple of years. They say some queen ants maybe could live for 10 or 20 years, but most insects only live for about a season. And that applies to centipedes and spiders too. So they'll kind of live all summer long and then they don't really live over the winter. So they'll lay eggs and then something else will come out over the winter. So most things you see don't live to be most more than a year. Sometimes people in their houses, if they have a pet spider or something, can live for a couple of years, but not many of these arthropods really can live for much more than a year. Sometimes they only live for a couple of weeks in the summer. It seems like a short time, but they get a lot done in those few weeks. So with a centipede, like you see, as many segments as you can fit on, and then as long as there's a pair of legs on each segment, it's a centipede. So I'm gonna put one pair of legs on each segment. Um, let's put an extra big pair of legs here. That's the other exciting thing, is that not always are the legs exactly the same. We'll see that when we start talking about insects too, is that sometimes the legs are different shapes and they'll have a different pair on each segment. And that definitely happens, different colors. And with this one, 
It definitely has antenna and mouth parts. So and that's our chance. You know what? We haven't done our big crushing mandibles ones yet. So let's say with these ones, they have some kind of big sharp mouth parts with spines on them, and, but really tiny eyes. And we'll give them antennas and we'll give it this kind of simple beaded antenna. It kind of looks really simple. Actually, this one looks a lot like centipedes I have seen around here. So there you go, that, that is a centipede. And if you see something that has a lot of segments, one pair of legs on each one, the mouth parts can be variable if you look at different ones. And then look if it's got antenna, bang, you got a centipede. Now, I think we got a little bit more time. I'm gonna to try to get to the insects, cause I like insects. So let me try to draw one. And my favorite insect of all, I think somebody asked me, is flies. So let's try drawing a fly because I like flies. So insects, this is also important. Three segments on the body. So you get a head, you get a middle part, and you get a tail. So not like the centipede where you have as many as you want, not the spider where you only get two, but insects you gotta have three. And there's six legs that are all on the middle section. And from there, there's any variety of things you wanna go with. So let's try a fly because I like flies. So there's a big head. And you know what? I haven't gotten to get creative with the eyes yet. So let's do a really big eye like this. And yes, there are insects that have eyes that big. It's true. Sometimes they have, head, have eyes that are so big they cover their entire head. And there's not really anything else on the head. So this is where you think of they're like, oh, this is the one that's got all the different little squares in it. Yes. That is a fly head that's got lots of different little squares. And, but let's say because the head is so big, let's go with a smaller antenna. We can't have everything be gigantic. So it's got a really tiny little antenna that doesn't probably do very much, just a little bit for smelling. Um, and house flies, if you know, have kind of a odd, stumpy, thick mouth part like this that they use to just sort of drink up stuff which is why you sometimes find them on the garbage. They'll just kind of sit on the garbage and just drink whatever liquid's there. It's pretty gross, but they seem to enjoy it. So there's a big fly head that has what we're looking for. It's got mouth parts, it's got antenna, it's got a big eye. So we said there's one more body segment here, which we'll do as the middle section and then the tail section. So there's our three segments of the inset of the fly. And because it's a fly, it only has two wings. So we're only gonna put the front pair of wings on here. And it's got a few wing veins on it. And this is where it gets really complicated when you're looking at wing veins and every different fly has a different pattern and those get really complicated. So you can kind of pick any one you want. I saw a really good question there about what do flies eat? Anything. If you can think of something, there's a fly somewhere that eats it. There's flies that live inside of tree trunks. There's flies that live in garbage. There's flies that live in the soil. There's flies that hunt other flies. So anything you can think of for a fly to eat, there's flies. There's even flies I know that only are attracted to smoke. So there's certain types of flies you only find them around a campfire. I don't know what they're doing the rest of the time. Yes, a fly would eat your pizza if you gave it a chance. If you left it outside long enough, it would definitely, there would be some kind of fly that would come and eat that pizza. It might take a while for it to finish it though. <laughs> it won't finish it all, so it'll definitely share. So let's put a couple of legs on these. How many? Six. And these ones are gonna be kind of hairy legs because that's just the kind of fly that it is. So there you go. So as long as it's got six legs, three segments, we only went with two wings this time, but we could have done four wings, two on each side or we could have done no wings. It would still be an insect. And let's just make this kind of hairy so it's not as boring. Okay, I think I can squeeze, so, I'm trying to squeeze in one more. Uh, quickly, sure. Just okay. like one more minute. Oh, more, okay, let's see oh, how two more minutes. I can do one more. <laughs> Is this a challenge to see if I can quickly do one more thing? I haven't done a beetle yet. And I have a lot of friends that work on beetles. Ooh, a dragonfly? I'm getting a strong request for a dragonfly. It seems like dra dragonflies and scorpions are the are a favorite of a 
a lot of people in the in the you chat. Let's go with dragonfly. I can do that one quick because I remember how it goes. Now, dragonflies are insects, so they're going to have three body segments. So let's go with a head, a body, and let's give it a really long tail section because dragonflies have that. That's the other thing with insects. Doesn't matter how long they are, each of the segments, as long as there's three of them. So let's say this one also has, let's go with really big red eyes. Some of them have big, big red eyes. And we'll make it cross hatched like that. Big eyes, and they have big eyes because they like to hunt. So they're flying around looking for things to eat. Um, dragonflies usually have really tiny antennas. So we're just gonna put the smallest little antenna here. Not really that impressive. But their mouth parts, they actually have multiple little mouth parts coming off. So they're gonna be like this, different sets of mandibles like that, that they're using to grab things and chew them. Now they're kind of tiny, but they are on there and they're kind of chewing mouth parts. So if you look at them really close on the dragonfly's mouth, there's lots of little mouth parts because they're always chewing everything that they catch. Now they do have four wings. So we're gonna go with, Like that, and these are the ones where you can't have too many veins on them. This is the checkerboard pattern you're gonna go with. And once again, colors too. If you want them to have bright red wings, yellow wings, anything like this could work. Oh, what did we forget? Legs. The cool thing about dragonflies is that they can actually eat while they're flying. I don't recommend anyone to run around in their backyard while eating a sandwich. That's usually not very safe. Sit down and eat your sandwich. Dragonflies get a pass on that one. They always fly while they're eating. So as a result, their legs are kind of pointing forward so that they can grab something and keep flying as they go. So actually, that's not a bad little dragonfly. Although they usually have lots of colors. So let's say this one has blue stripes on it. But you can make it tiger striped. You can make it any colors you wanted to. And let's say the tip of the abdomen is totally blue like that. You know what? That's a dragonfly that's very similar. One thing with dragonflies, you're gonna have to wait a little bit longer in the summer, especially around here in BC and, and uh, certainly up in Whitehorse, the folks up there or down in Washington. You're not gonna see them till later in the summer, probably more like July or August. And dragonflies, they'll eat anything they can catch because they are predators and they'll catch any little fly they can. How am I doing for time, Chris? <laughs> so I'm just going to jump in. Um, thank you so much, Joel. So we're, what we're going to do is we're going to, we'll officially end uh, the session. So if anyone needs to leave, please do. But then there were lots of really great, great questions that, um, so we'll have an unofficial time. Feel free to stay on whether you're on uh, Facebook Live or um, in the Zoom room, um, and we'll answer some of those questions. But I did want to, before we end, um, I'm just going to share the screen again. And so I'll come back to, oops. Oh no, too many windows. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, so I'm just gonna bring the what I had up before because I'm gonna show you. So if you wanted to share some, whether it's a dragonfly or a centipede, um, or any of the insects and, and, and spiders that you, and centipedes that you drew today, please share it with us. You could, there's multiple ways to share it. So you can either share it to me directly by emailing me at cocconnor at royalbcmuseum.bc.ca. Um, or you could share it through social media, uh, Royal BC Museum, uh, or hashtag RBCMKids. 
keep exploring. On our learning portal, we have, um, we have information that's specifically about insects and spiders. Uh, this is uh, right below here. There's, uh, we have a pathway called What Has Six Legs? Um, so if you go to our learn, you can Google Royal BC Museum and Learning, learning Portal or rbcm.bc slash LP. And then next week, we're going to be doing tide pool doodles with Heidi Gardner. And Heidi is our uh, collection manager of invertebrates. Um, she's holding, you could tell from the look on the girl's face that it's a little like shocking and maybe a little smelly, which she's, she probably won't have that next week, but that's the kind of thing that she sometimes is, is like, actually not that because that, that would have a spine. So I think she was just looking at some fish that were uh, in her area. So, um, so that's next week. So join us next Wednesday at, at three at eleven a.m. Um, and and if you are an adult or you're a youth, um, just to be aware that every Tuesday and Thursday at twelve o'clock we have an RBCM at home session with um, with staff. My colleague Kim Goff uh, runs uh, those. And then today, actually at two o'clock, we're doing our first RBCM outside. So we'll be looking at um, Thunderbird Park just outside of the museum. Just one staff is going there and showing some of the, the polls that, and actually two and the one staff is gonna be at home uh, showing the, uh, some of the incredible work that has happened recently in Thunderbird Park with a, a pole that was recently um, repainted and, and put back up. So lots of exciting things to do. Um, thank you so much for joining us today. Um, thank you so much, Joel, for um, giving us a lot of thoughts in terms of how to draw different kinds of insects and spiders and centipedes, but also a lot of ideas about what are we actually looking at and, and the, the crazy world of, of entomology. So uh, thank you so much, Joel. Thank you. It was, it was a lot of fun. So that, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop the recording for um, Zoom. Um, but I'll keep on the Facebook Live uh, just for a little bit longer, just while we do some questions. Um, and if you're wanting to stay on with Zoom, feel free to stay on as well, uh, at least for a little while. So.